let's look why we have four diodes with the IGBT bridge in the square wave inverter. We are using the same circuit which was in the previous video. To see the previous video, click the cart shown on the top of the video. S1, S2, S3, S4 switches represent the four IGBTs. We are going to see how the diodes will work with an inductive load. Let's run the simulation first. We can use the switching pattern, switch S1, S2 first and S3, S4 next as we used before. Output current through the load is shown by the green color curve. Here I slow down the simulation speed. That will help us to observe the results clearly. Let's turn off S1, S2 and see what is going to happen. We can clearly see here after we turn off the two switches, the D3 and D4 diodes are now conducting. Then the current across the inductor will reduces. So, the inductor tries to keep the current as before and continue the current flow in same direction with the stored energy. Same scenario will happen with the S3 and S4 switches as well. Now the D1 and D2 diodes help to keep the current like before. In IGBT bridge circuits, diodes which are connected parallel with the IGBT's conduct in reverse direction. This is the function of a freewheel diode as the IGBT cannot conduct current in the reverse direction. Let's see the output waveform. Current will not drop suddenly at the switching as before. Diodes help to keep the waveform much closer towards sinusoidal output. In motors, this reverse current send through a resistor and dissipate energy to brake fast. Modern vehicles use the reverse current to recharge a battery bank or a supercapacitor. That is known as regenerative braking. So, the anti-parallel diodes or the flywheel diode do a great job in bridge circuits. Hope you get the flywheel concept. Let's meet on my next video. Subscribe, Curious a channel. To get notifications, click the bell icon. Thank you for watching.